Swamp child Liz Cheney, the congresswoman from Wyoming. From the swamp, works for the swamp, loved by the swamp. Especially now, because Liz Cheney, well, she lost her leadership position uh, among Republicans. She was number three. She lost that. Uh, looks like she wanted to lose that because she has been, well, stunningly disloyal to Donald Trump. I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. We have seen the danger uh, that he continues to provoke with his language. Uh, we have seen his lack of commitment and dedication to the Constitution. Uh, and I think it's very important that we make sure whomever we elect is somebody who will be faithful to the Constitution. Well, well uh, generally speaking, uh, the fake news doesn't care all that much who the number three leader is in the House of Representatives on the minority side, but they really made a big deal out of this. And what she just said is music to their ears. What Kinzinger and Cheney are doing is much more courageous. I mean, what struck me about Liz Cheney is the, her spine. Liz Cheney has chosen to be a patriot. Liz Cheney did the right thing. She, she, she voted her conscience. I think a lot of Liz Cheney. I think she's uh, she's been bold and truthful into her truth. She's doing exactly the right thing, and I admire her greatly. Actually, I think it's deeply personal for Liz Cheney. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, would the swamp spend this much time on a Republican congressman from Wyoming? under ordinary circumstances. Uh, Wyoming, by the way, uh, not really. I've been to Wyoming probably more than Liz Cheney has. She is a product of the swamp. Uh, grew up there, bred there, the swamp through and through. Actually graduated from McLean High School, a suburb of Washington, D.C., a very wealthy suburb. Uh, she was on the McLean High School cheerleading squad, all right? Her home is the swamp. And her dad, of course, is the former vice president, Dick Cheney. Talk about swamp royalty. Yeah, he fell out of favor there for a little while, but through and through, this guy is swamp. Let's go way back to the late 60s, 1970s. He was uh, in the Nixon White House, in the Ford White House. He had a job with Donald Rumsfeld, later became secretary of defense himself. He was in Congress, vice president, and a major architect of the war in Iraq. Actually, both wars. It's pretty wild, huh? And this is where I think it gets personal. Now, everybody seems to have forgotten, nobody talks about it, but the Iraq war was a huge, huge disaster, a total catastrophe. There were no weapons of mass destruction there. I was there myself. I couldn't believe it. I mean, back here at home, nobody seemed to really give a damn, and this country reelected Bush and Cheney in 2004. But you know who had the boldness to call it all out? You know who. Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? It was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. Damn right. And in that room, by the way, they all turned on him. It was full of traditional Republicans, but it was music to our ears across the country. We know that he was right. George W. Bush, and to probably a larger extent, Dick Cheney, responsible for that war. Remember, again, how many years we were, were we there? What did we get out of it? No weapons of mass destruction. Sure, Saddam Hussein was eliminated, but we destabilized the region. I mean, chaos, ISIS, it all came as a result of this ridiculous invasion. And yeah, it's a little bit personal for me. I was there for the invasion itself, and then I went back, spent overall about a year in that country, and I didn't like it, and I had a few close calls myself. And I was really astounded how not too many people in this country uh, were making a big deal out of it when they found no weapons of mass destruction. All right, and something else. George W. Bush and his partner, Dick Cheney, they were so irresponsible in how they managed that war. Here's a prime example. There are some who feel like that uh, if they attack us, 
that we may decide to leave prematurely. They don't understand what they're talking about if that's the case. Let me finish. Um, there are some who uh, feel like that, you know, the conditions are such that they can attack us there. My answer is bring them on. Bring them on. Bring them on. That was two months after we declared uh, major combat operations over, and we had years of horrible fighting left in front of us. Bring it on. What a stupid thing to say. Isn't that right, Madam Cheney? The Trump political team is actively looking to coalesce around a primary challenger to you. What is your message to them? You know, uh, bring it on. It didn't work when George W. Bush said it. I don't think it's going to work right there. All right. I'll come back to her in a moment. Meanwhile, you heard about the big lie, the big lie about the fairness of the November election. Here's a big lie, a really big lie that they say all the time, uh, that what happened on January 6th was an insurrection. It will always be known January 6th as the Trump insurrection. Clearly, this was a yeah. deadly insurrection. Clearly, they were attempting to overthrow our government. This is an insurrection. There is a presidential-inspired insurrection. Plain and simple, an insurrection. An, an insurrection clearly happened. We all watched it. Mr. Trump is charged with inciting the deadly January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. <sighs> it was a riot that got out of hand. It wasn't an insurrection, and here's proof, because this country has laws against insurrections. We really do. It's part of the federal code. And they're charging everybody, left and right, with obstruction of federal proceedings, this, that, the other thing. Here's the law against insurrection. And if you look at everybody, and they've arrested hundreds of people, many of them are still in custody, no one's been charged with insurrection. And by the way, no one was armed. Isn't that interesting? I think so. But they're trying to delegitimize anybody who has any kind of concern about November, about the constitutionality of America. That's okay. Jim Jordan was brilliant today as they, the Democrats ran this, but Jim Jordan made some great points about January 6th and what we were entitled to on that day. And does the Constitution allow members to object to the Electoral College results on January 6th after a presidential election? My understanding is that it does. It does, right. Is it okay for Jim McGovern, the Democrat a member of Congress, to object to Alabama on January 6, 2017? Is that all right? He's allowed I, to do that, I, right? I think, I think if members are adhering to their constitutional rights and roles and responsibilities, you know, that's, again, a question for all, all the folks in Congress. When you hear a big lie, think of this conversation, think of the Insurrection Act, think of the lies that they are telling routinely. Jim Jordan, thank you for that. All right, so what's this all about? What is Liz Cheney? What's really driving her? I think it's a personal animus to our president, Donald Trump. I do. She came from the swamp. She's from the swamp. Uh, she works for the swamp. Deep state. Look at her father, the architect of the Iraq War. So Donald Trump comes to town on January 20th of 2017 and says this. How do you think the swamp reacted? For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. Washington flourished, but the people did not share in its wealth. Politicians prospered, but the jobs left and the factories closed. The establishment protected itself, but not the citizens of our country. Their victories have not been your victories. Their triumphs have not been your triumphs. And while they celebrated in our nation's capital, there was little to celebrate for struggling families all across our land. That all changes starting right here and right now. Do you think Liz and Dick Cheney, who were at that ceremony, do you think they looked at each other and <laughs> exchanged an awkward glance? Boy, oh boy, Donald Trump, he's got us there. Listen to what Donald Trump 
just said or said back uh, on Inauguration Day. I think this statement suddenly has, um, I think we understand it. I think we understand a bit more where she's coming from. I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. <laughs> now, I think we understand perfectly where she is coming from. Black lives do matter, not in the way that the Black Lives Matter organization says so. Seems to only matter when a black life is taken by a white cop. No, everybody matters, including 18-year-old China Forney. She was shot in the back outside of her home in Albany, New York on May 3rd. It happened at 3 in the afternoon. Someone drove by and fired multiple shots, and police found Forney laying in the street. She died at the hospital. Now, hundreds in the community gathered at a vigil, beautiful vigil, vigil in her honor. She was in her senior year at Albany Leadership Charter School, a beloved member of her dance team. She had just applied to college and was enrolling in a nursing program. The local church is offering $10,000 for information leading to her arrest. 18-year-old China Forney shot in the back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in a major American city. We'll be right back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.